Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. We're so glad you could attend. Step inside, step inside. So, in this part of the video, we're going to get to the meat of the matter, and that's the file input-output routine that's needed to make this go. So I think the place we need to be paying attention to is our friend get file contents here, which really doesn't have anything in it. Okay, so we are we we, we need to we need to locate the file and open it, but it also introduces other headaches. Um as we'll see as we go along. So let's go ahead and focus on that issue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a try catch throw sequence. And I'm just going to catch an IO exception here. Because if the file's not found, we're going to we're going to we're going to catch that in another stage of development. Now, So the next thing, yeah, so 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 now we, we have our try catch block. And what we're gonna do is we have to worry about what's going on with this file. First of all, there's a possibility that the file does not exist. We're gonna have to handle that. And we can actually handle that before we even start. So file. File, okay. File, uh, file is equal to new file of file name. Now the main reason I'm doing this is I will have access to a very useful method if uh, if file dot exists, okay. And then we're going to say if it doesn't exist. Okay, if the file does not exist, then let's go ahead and put our error message in. We're going to say, uh-oh, we got a problem right here because we need to interact with the text area. Yeah, so I go ahead and I type ta dot set text of string dot format of file percent s is a heffalump and you all know what a heffalump is I hope a heffalump is a non-existent creature in the land of poo and if you don't know about that you better go back and read Winnie the Pooh because you're missing out on a major part of cultural literacy. So I say it's a heffalump. And for now, I'm just going to say uh, this. I'll even tell them the absolute path of their file because I think it's insulting not to. Now, here's the problem. Where is TA defined? TA is defined in this other method. Uh-oh. So we got ourselves a problem here. I want get file contents to have access to the text area, but I don't want to pass in a whole collection of things. It just doesn't make much sense. I don't want this 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 modest little method to have to get all kinds of different parameters. So I'm going to do a process called lifting. I'm going to lift this text area to be a state variable. So to this end, I'm going to delete this line right here, come up to the top of my program, and paste it right here. Now I'm going to say private, not private, but private text area TA. And then what I need to do here is put a semicolon, all right? And I'm going to delete this, paste it, 
and in the constructor, I'm going to go ahead and instantiate it. So the text area is now part of the state of my application. I have lifted this from being a local variable to start to being a variable that's visible inside the class because different pieces of the class need to go to work on it. Now, do we need to make any other changes? That is just fine. And I'm going to get delete this here, and let's just bring it upstairs. We'll do this in the constructor, too. It's a property. Let's go ahead and set the property when we make the text area. So its editable property is now set to false. And now, hey, eh, voila! We now have access to the text area in here. Okay. Okay, so that is step number one all right now the next thing that happens is we know once we make it past this initial part of our function all right um and let's go ahead and return oh no oh what are we doing here we are Okay, yes, okay, no, we're, we're, we're in good shape here. And we're just gonna return an empty string. All right, we're done. All right. Uh-huh. Oh, you know, actually this would be smarter. Let's just go ahead and return the string.format since we're returning a string. Hey, maybe we don't need access to the text area in here, but we'll figure that out as we go along, all right? So, if the file doesn't exist, we're going to return that message. Okay, now, we have a second branch here. So, we're going to make an else branch. And I'm going to say, actually, not just else, but else if. Okay, now, it's time to go look at the API guide for final file. So... Let's pull out the standard library because we're using the standard library. So I have the API guide for both that and JavaFX open. Here's file. And we need something. We need a Boolean here. Yes, you see is file and is directory. Okay, this is a test for something is a, a, a directory. This is a test if something is a file. So we can say is file, all right. So if it's a file, now we're gonna go ahead and have our try catch block. So let's go to work on this. This is, this is uh, the next step. I'm gonna tab all this in. Okay, so if the file, now, because the file must exist at this point, we do not have to worry separately about having a catch block for file not found exception because the file is guaranteed to be found. So in here, what we need to do is aspirate the contents of the file. And here is my preferred method. I'm going to make a buffered reader br is new buffered reader of new file reader of file name. Okay, I could also pass in the file, but let's just do that. All right, that looks pretty good. And let's make sure I'm always suspicious about parentheses. Let me go down the other end, make sure that oh yeah they match up very nicely. Good. Okay. Now here's something you're not used to seeing. A buffered reader has a method called lines. Lines creates a stream. It's a stream of strings consisting of the lines in the file. Let's go look at that in the uh, API guide. This is a new, relatively new thing, and this is the way to go. I'm telling you, it is the way to go. 
So let's go find our lines. Returns a stream, the elements of which are the lines read from this buffered reader. So it's a stream of strings. Okay. The reader must not be operated on blah, 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 blah. Okay. The question is, with these things is always, does it give you the new line at the end of the string? Ah, uh, string, okay, bingo. I'm not sure, so we'll, we'll find out. We'll, we'll learn about this as we go along. Dot lines. Now I'm gonna use the for each operator. The for each operator will take a lambda as its argument. Now, wait a minute. We have a problem here. We need to accumulate things into our string. So to that end, I'm going to come up here. Actually, let's just come up here. And in fact, yeah, okay, I'm going to make a string buffer as well. Now, if you're not familiar with string buffers, a string buffer is a mutable string. And its most important method is append. You can chuck things on to the end of it. And the nice thing is it does not pollute the string pool. So it's a mutable string, this string buffer object. All right. So what I'm going to do is for each line in the file, I'm going to say sb.append of line. Okay. And then once I'm done with this, I'm going to close the buffered reader. Now you got to admit, this is an improvement on the while loop idiom. It's cleaner, it's shorter, and it's nicer, and it's really transparent as to what's happening here. Each line is being appended to the string buffer. Then we close it. Okay. And then finally, I'm going to return sb dot to string. Okay. Because we're promising to return a string. If you return the string buffer, You'll get a compiler error because a string buffer is not a string, but it has the obvious two string method in that it takes whatever contents you have poured down its gullet and regurgitates them as a string. Bingo. Okay, now down here, I'm just going to put in a I'm going to put in an ex.print stack trace in case an IO exception arises. Now, once we've done this, it might be a good time to compile because we've written a lot of code. Oh, wait a minute. Before we even compile, we did some things. There's an IO exception, there's a buffered reader, there's a file reader. Okay, we better import those things so that we don't get a nasty gram from the import police. File reader, buffered reader. And good old IO exception. You got mooned by an IO exception, Mr. Jupiter. Okay, so we put those things in there and we just avoided at least one asteroid hitting our ironic planet from the compiler. Uh, so I kept my alias. This is the same session. Oh, oops, I need file too. Oh, snap. I better fix that. Oh, let's just come up here and chop this. Compile again. Okay, I'm missing a return statement. What I forget? Oh, I know what I've done here. There's no 
I mean, there's no return statement at the end here, and it's possible for it not to return, just for now to keep the errors away. All right, let's put an empty string in. Okay, let's try that again. Let's beat this into compiling shape. Oh, good. <clears throat> now, no additional action will occur because we have yet to call this thing. But there we go. All right. So, let's see what we want to do here. We have our we have our get file contents. Okay. Now we have another uh, item on our hands. And that is, oh, let's see. No, we don't. Maybe we don't have another item on. Yes, we do have another item on, on our hands. Because what we need to do now in the go method, let's go up to our, hey, where'd it go? Go button. Okay, our go button method. So, when we hit the go button, what we're going to do here is we're going to say TA See, I told you we, we, we did need that TA to be visible, didn't we? Because we're going to use it in build controls. Okay, so it's TA dot set text of Oh yeah, what have we got here? We have get file contents. Of, hmm, get file contents. Oh, we're going to pass in a string. Oh, yes. So we can go to Mr. Text Field here. Okay. We're going to say text field dot get text. Because that's how we get text out of a text field. We use the get text method. All right. And then we're going to say empty parentheses, one, two, bang. All right. Okay. So let's see what happens here. This is scary. And I'm going to comp it, I'm going to compile it, and see what kind of a fiasco I've made. Oh my God. That makes me really suspicious. Now I'm going to say run. Maybe we'll get a big fat cream pie in our face in the form of an exception. But let's just type in file viewer. Java. Go. Ooh, it, oh my goodness. It's all on one gigantic line. That's a problem. And we know exactly where that came from. So let us quit. It's because lines seems to amputate the end of the line. So I'm going to go ahead and go plus and get put those new line methods got they, they, those new line characters got amputated. So let's fix that. Okay, I thought that might be a problem. Compile. Run. Pops up on the screen. Okay, now I'm going to hit go. Ooh, looky. Oh, how pretty. All right. Now, this is... You sort of expect when you're editing plain text that you're going to have a mono-spaced font. We don't have that here. Let's make it. That's easy enough to do. Let's go ahead and make that adjustment and see what we think of the appearance of our document. All right. So I'm going to reopen this thing. And I'm going to go down to the text area that we created here. And here's how you set its style. Ooh. 
Wait till you see what happens here. That looks like CSS from some web development class. That in fact is CSS. FX has its own dialect of CSS, which is what's gonna allow you to prettify the rather plain Jane applications we're now creating. All right, so now let's go ahead and compile again and see if we like the result. And now let's run it. And let's go file viewer. And let's hit go. And boys and girls, what do you all think? Does that look pretty? Now, if you have tabs, you might get a tab stop of something like eight. And you're going to hate that. But, you can fix that very easily. And I'll show you how. Okay, if you want tabs not to do that, let's go down to our lines here. For each line, what I'm going to do is exactly that. And that would replace every tab with four spaces or however many spaces you want. And that does it in a nice, clean, pretty fashion. Okay, so you can see it's very clear what the processing of each line is in here. Okay, and we're basically just telling it what we want for each do this to the line. It's a declarative style of programming that I find rather nice. It's rather nice. Okay. Let me compile this again just to make sure that we're still okay. Because it's not going to make any change in my program. I set my editor in such a way that every tab becomes four spaces. In fact, if you program in Python and you don't do this, uh, not so great. I highly recommend doing that with your editor for Python files, and I do it for everything. It just... It's, it, it just makes the world a happier place. It will make you happier. Okay, so now we've sort of got that file there. But I want the... Oh, I want to run one other test. I have one more test. I need to do this. Uh, let's do this. I have one other test. I'm thinking about the vicious hand of Murphy and the things he might do to us. Okay. Oh, goodness. That worked. Okay, that worked. Good. Okay, so we have our, you know, we can go anywhere in our file system. And it's working. Lovely. Click it away. Now, one thing I said we want to have happen is the file we create, we need for it to be displayed in the title bar of the stage. And right now, the stage is a local variable. But I'm going to show you a standard arabesque that is done in a lot of JavaFX programs. Watch me do this. It's now a state variable. Do not instantiate it in the constructor. You will have a problem where you want to instantiate it or where you want to deal with it is right here. You go this dot primary equals primary. Boom! We just lifted the stage up. All right. It's now a class state variable. And so we can go and find this thing here that we got. Okay. Uh, where did it go? 
Oh, yeah. I need to go. I don't need to go in here. I need to go in here to the go button. All right. So the other thing we're going to do is we're going to say primary dot set title of where's our file? Uh oh. Where's our file? We got a problem, Houston, but I think we can fix that. We need visibility of the file in the build controls method because what I want to do here is say at file dot get absolute path. That's what I want to do. I want to do that. So bad burns a hole in my pocket. So how am I going to make that happen? Well, 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 I think it might actually be a smart idea to do this. Let's go up to constructor land here and we're going to say file, file. Okay, down in here Okay, I'm going to do this. Okay, file is null. All right. Now, I've lifted this to be a state variable, so I'm going to have to be careful. Okay, get file contents. Ah, uh, you know what I'm going to do here? I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to delete that line. I'm now going to do this. Okay. Now I'm doing a lot of dangerous stuff. All right. But the other thing I'm going to do is when the go button is hit, let's go down to that go button thing. All right, where's that go button? That's where to do the dirty work. Yeah. Oh. All right. Inside of here, I'm going to say, I'm going to change this to be file equals tf.getText. Okay. So here we're setting the file. Here. Goodbye. All right. Now, we may have produced other wreckage in the process. We've got to be careful. Okay, that one's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and compile and see how much I broke. Refactoring is dangerous. String cannot be converted to a file. Where is that? Oh, yes. Colon 85. Let's see, what kind of stupid thing did we do here? Oh. We need to do that. So we're wrapping the file name inside of a file object. Now it's an honest to God file object. Okay, uh, let's try that again. You always break something when you do this. It's dangerous. Okay. Cannot find symbol file name. Okay, so what I'm going to do here It's a very smart idea to get the absolute path of the file. If you don't do this, in fact, you should on your own just pass file in there and, do, and, and use an absolute path and see what could possibly go wrong because something can go wrong. Okay, so we're, 
we're continuing on our mission to squash the naughtiness that we made. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna open my bash RC file. Uh-oh. It's telling me that file does not exist. I wonder why that is happening. Oh yes, because I misspelled bash RC. It, of course it's a heffalump. There it is. There's my bash RC file. So things are working rather nicely. And we only have one other stage of development that we need to worry about. And that is the case of a directory. So let's go ahead and talk about that. So what we'd like to do is if the file's a directory, I'd like to list the directory contents. So here's get file contents. And you know what? Maybe we can do that in here. So let's go ahead and do this. Else if Okay, file dot is directory. Oh, give me a second. If I don't plug my machine in, it's gonna go. It's giving me the nasty red feed me signal. I better feed it or my whole session is gonna come crashing down along my head. All right, here we go. One, two, three, feed. Boop. Okay, that reassuring beep says it's being fed. Okay, so we got one more case here. If the file's a directory, what we want to do is display the contents of that directory. Okay, so let's see what we got here. All right, so I'm going to say, and in fact, yes, I can do that. I have my string buffer. So let's see what we want to do here. sb.append of string.format of of percent s comma all right in fact, why don't I say this, not just percent %s, but directory. So the user knows exactly what we're talking about. So uh, let's go down the end there. Something's fishy. My, my editor is telling me something's not right. The parentheses, yes, that parentheses does not match. Now it does. Okay, good. So we have the problem of listing the contents of the directory. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna look that up in the API guide and see what we, let's see what we can do. Okay, so we have file here. All right. Okay, file, and let's search for the word directory. Okay, uh, there's a lot of things, okay. And I have a feeling there's a method, okay. There's going to be a method to list the contents. List files, look at that. List files returns an array of files, okay. So since this thing is guaranteed to be a directory, we can legitimately call list files on it. Okay, so I need to say file array, uh, let's call it contents is equal to file dot list files. Okay, now I better do this while I'm in here. Two things. One with string dot format. 
you have to explicitly put a whack end at the end. So I'm going to say four. Um, file item in contents. I'm going to say SB. I'm going to say item dot get name. Okay. Plus. Ah, uh, yes. A whack end. All right. So that's going to list all the contents. Return sb dot to string. So if the file's a directory, we're going to list its contents. Let's see if this thing actually. We just wrote this raw. Let's see if it compiles. Oh, oh my God, that's terrible. Uh, let's run it. Let's see, I'm gonna put dot in here and hit go. Ooh, it works. So we've completed writing this little application. Um, this is going to evolve eventually into a primitive sort of text editor. But for now, we can see that we can fetch a file and display useful information about it in a GUI window. Also, we, we have other things that are missing. We're missing um, maybe the idea of a file chooser coming up or menus in this application. Yes, this will get some improvements of that uh, ilk in later videos, but I think this is about the time when we can stop.